like the and a couple of times I went out to the refrigerator to the ice box and there were nice steaks in there. Her husband was a cook in the army and oh. he'd sit and she'd get steaks from me and, and bring them to me. And Ben was big enough then, he was carrying a paper. And the, the, the I think he, I don't remember if he was carrying the Times or the Star, but anyway, it was every paper he was carrying. He, he received a turkey for Thanksgiving. So uh, I had some young kids that lived there too. And, uh, and uh, I invited them all if they had no place to go for Christmas to all be there for dinner and I served a turkey and, and I was able to get potatoes and, and the, all the turbulence and everything and we had a nice Thanksgiving dinner and they all just loved that so I thought it was wonderful and they kept trying to bring their friends there oh. to lay them. I didn't have enough room for them all and uh, I know this one boy uh, that uh, that uh, came, he had his uncle, his uncle came and wanted to room. Eventually, he moved in when somebody left, and uh, some of them had uh, someone in the family who moved in. So I. <coughs> I never had any problem getting rooms, but rumors, but this one man that came took the front room when it was empty. Uh, I don't know what, what, where the band moved to that we called Uncle, Uncle, and it wouldn't be called Uncle something. Anyway, um, this man moved in. And he was from Germany, he said. And his mail came under a couple of her names. And then one time someone knocked on the door and asked for somebody whose name I had, had heard. And I said, no, there's no one living here with that name. And he heard us, and he was right there in the front room, right next to the front door. And he said, oh, I, I go by that name because it's easier to, to spell and to say than my, than my real name. And which wasn't true at all. His real name was whatever was, uh, um, was easier to say and to spell. But I let it go at that, and uh, they went in and they did their business, whatever it was. And I know I mentioned it to the woman next door in her room, and she had somebody on the top floor that uh, uh, left in the middle of the night, but left some kind of broadcasting stuff in the mm -hmm. ring. But we never knew who these foreigners were. And it was quite a thing to run a rooming house and try to keep it right. So anyway, I kept the rooming house going and Jack come home in the army by, he decided that we need a bigger place. So he went scouting around and they found the Alabama Street House. So 
We moved over there, but he left the washer and dryer and things in, in the Illinois Street, or North Street. And at that time, Ben got a job working for the, um, the good little grocery store that was on the Illinois Street, and it was owned by Jews. And they wanted him to work. He he asked them if they had a job, and they said they had work for him, but they would be closed on um, Friday or Saturday. Or so. Probably Saturday. And Saturday. Saturday is or Saturday. And but they'd be open on the Sunday. But Ben, if he would work for them, he had to. He should go to church on Sunday morning or the Sunday school, whichever he went to, and then then come to work. But he must not miss church or Sunday school to work. So we let him go at that, and, and Ben worked for them for quite a long time, and he liked working for them. But in the meantime, I was, doing all, all this work with the roomy house, cleaning it and, and taking care of things. And we moved, then when we moved to Alabama Street, it was altogether a different thing. Gosh, I got a pair of girls, and I didn't know they were gay. No such thing like that discussed back then. But they were, and when I came in one day, one had the other bending her back over the railing to the upstairs. I said, quit that. I said, you're going to break her back. Well, that's what I'm trying to do, she said. Oh, my God. And then we have another. I told them both to move. I wasn't going to put up with that kind of stuff. So he moved in, and then an old retired sailor moved in, in the, the room that they had. Was that Mr. McAvoy? Mr. Yeah. McAvoy? That might, that might have been in there. I think that it was. Uh, I remember uh, some of these people. Yeah, Mr. yeah, I think it was Mr. McAvoy. Yeah, he he went out one morning and was uh, just a couple blocks from the house. I saw the ambulance pull up, and I thought, oh, I hope nothing happened to him. He was out, and he was getting up in years, and it was. He had a heart attack and died on the street, mm. and his brother came to get things. And I told him when he started to get his books and things, and he was kind of pitching things around. I said, you better look at those books before you decide whether you're going to keep them or not, because I said, that's where he always hid his money, was in his books. So his brother thanked me for that, and he found quite a sum of money that they, yeah, I hadn't put in there. But he left about everything else um, there in the room. He said he had no way to dispose of it, and there's nobody would want it. So I, so I got rid of it. I guess I stuck it in a Salvation Army bag, took it there. But. Well, he had a, a set of tools I kept, little axe and hammer and screwdriver, such things, uh, and a toolbox uh, they were in I kept. <coughs> but I, uh, I always had a pretty good bunch of people. Give me a stop. Okay, well, we'll stop. Where was I? But, uh, 
you told us about the the place on North Street. So yesterday you started the 706 North Alabama. Oh. Oh, uh, yeah, we, we left uh, North Street and moved out Alabama Street. And that was quite an experience. We, we had a, a rather big house and um, rented uh, rooms. And some of the people we had were really interesting people. Um, but we had Joe and Mary, and come to find out Mary came from, I think, Carlisle, Illinois, just a few towns east of Summerfield. And she begged me if I ever went home and, and run into anybody that asked about her, that I not tell them about Joe, her husband, because he was an alcoholic. And he was, he had been a boxer, and he was a good guy, except that he would, well, back then, Mary worked I think in a hospital, and they had to wear hosiery. And you could buy a, a load of money, uh, unless you were just lucky to have her on in, in any. Well, I worked in a restaurant, didn't make any difference what you wore, uh, as long as you had the uniform on. But if you didn't have to wear not on holes. Anyway, every time I'd see any on sale, I'd buy a pair and give them to Barry, and she would give me what I paid for them. And uh, Joe found where she kept them in the, in the dresser drawer and take them down to the tavern and and give them to, to the waitress that waited on him and served him his drinks. And she had an off time keeping also. She'd have me keep them until uh, she was ready to need him and then just take a pair at a time. So. It, it happened. I never did run to anybody that knew her, and if I had, I would have never mentioned anything because I didn't. I left Summerfield because I hated all that gossip, and I wasn't about to start at any place else. And then, and then we had. Um, um, Uncle somebody and the girl that that called him uncle, her name was Dorothy. And he wasn't her uncle, but she called him uncle. And so he wanted all of us to call him uncle, which we did. And we had a woman living in the room that was built in the hallway somehow or other. I don't remember how that was. But it was it wasn't a very private room, it seemed to me. Anyway, we didn't charge much for it and, and she lived in it. But she didn't have um, much to do with anyone. Then we had an elderly man, I can't remember his name, but he came from the country to work in um, uh, something that had to do with the war things. And he used to take Ben with him to the country when he'd go back to visit and give him a day or so in the country because he 
maybe go home on a weekend and take him with him. And uh, I can't, oh, we had uh, um, the guy that had the girlfriend that called him. Oh, Orville? Orville. Orville Theriac. Yeah, Arm Orville and Helen. This, this His girlfriend was Helen. Was Helen. Helen. Anyway, her voice was terrible. It was. <laughs> it was like horrible. <laughs> yeah. It 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 just went through you. <laughs> And I, I just couldn't hardly stand her. Anyway, uh, Helen was friendly with everybody. And one day I was going through a, a store. I think it was a standard food store it was down the street. And anyway, I was in the store and I saw Helen. And I just called Hello, Helen. And I said, how are you? And he said, oh, she's fine. With that horrible voice you go. Uh, she said, I've had a baby. I said, oh, when did you get married? Oh, I'm not married. I just had the baby. <laughs> I felt like two cents. <laughs> With her yelling across the store. She just... One in the store and I was in the other. And I learned that not to her, but she would come to the house and stand out in front of the horrible in that horrible voice. And Arbor wouldn't obey her and go. She and Arbor were friends. So anyway, we had him there. And then we had some other man that didn't like Orville. And I know they were going to, they were fighting all the time. And one day the, the, the one guy is, uh, said that he was going to shoot him. Or he's going to kill him, he said. He didn't say shoot him. He said he's going to kill him. And I said, I grabbed him by the, the shirt and I said, don't you dare kill him in the house. I said, if you're going to kill him, you go out indoors. I don't want to clean up the mess. Uh. <laughs> I wasn't very sympathetic with the guy that he was going to kill. I'm telling him how to do it. <laughs> But anyway, it didn't end up that they were killed. But that was a neighborhood that was full of rooming houses, one after the other. And, and the backyards were full of... Uh, of uh, trailers. Yeah, trailers of all kinds. Some looked pretty neat and some didn't. They were Lee and Dorothy. 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 Lee and Dorothy. And Lee worked in a bank, and Dorothy thought that put them above everybody. Well, I didn't think so. So, anyway, Lee was friendly, but Dorothy was kind of snobbish. And I don't know why she thought she was so much better than anybody else, because that trailer wasn't any better than anybody else's. But anyway, Larry, the Lloyds lived there, and, and there was Larry and uh, what was Larry's little brother? Harold. 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 And Larry and Harold, and their mother was Jean. And their father was Cecil. Cecil. And Cecil was an alcoholic. And Jean had her hands full trying to raise her boys. And 
and put up with Cecil because he would come in just so drunk and be, be sick of his stomach and Gene was always a cleaning their trailer. But they were, as a family, they were a really nice family. And Sue and, and Larry would play together and were good friends. And, and you, you couldn't help but like Cecil. If, if when he was sober and he did work, uh, uh, but after work he had to stop and get his drinks. And th there were people in all those trailers in the backyard, and we had one old man, and his name was. Luther. L Luther. Yeah, Luther. And he had a ring that was so heavy that he had to hold his hand up with his left hand where he wore the where the ring. He had to hold it, put it on his right hand, and so his right hand could hold his left hand up. And he just loved to show his ring off to everybody. And when he'd sit in the bus and, uh, going down, he would always have his hands folded uh, or layered, I guess you'd call. And he had his right hand or his right hand under his left hand to hold his hand up so everybody could see his ring. Remember he uh -huh. passed the candy around? Remember when he passed the candy that he that he was showing us his candy? Uh -huh. When he passed the candy around. Luther had a box of candy. And it, he I don't know what it was for the holidays. And he passed it around, but he didn't want anybody to take the candy. He was just showing us the candy. You don't remember uh -huh. that. Well, I'm sorry. I, I I just get sort of mixed up at times with the way things happen, and Oh, Luther had a bag of candy that he passed around, and I guess that helped him make him popper. He didn't let any of us have it. He did not let anybody eat the candy. He was just past showing us the candy. Oh, he, oh, no one got to eat the candy. He, he was just showing it. Uh, and then we had another tenant that um, always came down the back stairway, and he'd have candy. That was Mr. Hutchinson. Mr. Hutchinson. Mr. He would bring the, the, the peanut candy down. Mr. Hutchinson would bring peanut candy down and he would he would eat it all. Well, we we had plenty of characters in the house. They keep us entertained, but the whole block was. And there were two girls that would come down every morning, and I always wiped down the stairway and mop the hall and, and would clean the bathroom and, and all. And those two girls showed up every morning and wanted coffee and, and wanted to just sit and talk. And I, finally I 
I got tired of it because I'd have to sit and entertain them. Uh, they thought I had to, and I, and I felt like I had to. And I got tired of it, and I told them that if they could come in the afternoon after I was done cleaning, it would be all right for them to stop by. But not every day that I had to clean the, the house and the bathrooms and things, and I couldn't sit and entertain them and have coffee for them every morning. So they kind of took me as an old grouch, and they didn't bother to come back. And then we, ha I had a, a, a sandbox for Sue and, and Jim, and I had several other things in the backyard. I don't recall exactly what I had, because there were a lot of children in, the, in that area. And they came and they played in those things. And there was way at the other end of the block was a couple that uh, I could just see the end of their trailer. But, and I'd see them and she was a very pretty girl. And uh, um, she had a little girl. It was just beautiful, and so <coughs> as she she would come down and play, and one day I said something. She said she was going home, and I said, "Well, she would stay a, a while longer." I said, "I saw your mother get in the car and go away, and there won't be anybody home," and she said what kind of car was it? And I don't know if I do the kind or not. Anyway, I explained to her what kind of a car it was, what it looked like. She says, oh, good. He says, wait till Daddy gets home. And I'll tell him that she went out with the um, soul and soul. I don't remember the name. And he said, and he'll just knock the hell out of her. And I was so shocked. Yeah. I didn't know. I thought, she's just a beautiful little child. I didn't know she knew such yeah. language. <laughs> but she did. <laughs> and uh, that's, that's the way the kid, those children grew up. They expected those things to happen. They saw them happen every few days, and they went along with it. And then another thing, we had the, the um, they had the trailers out in the backyard, and, and the, somehow one of them, one of the men had books in his trailers and things, and the kids just loved to, to go there and look at it. And he was very good to the children. He was he was all right. He could be trusted. But outside, I went outside uh, several times. I'd always go out and check the children, and I went out for a couple of days. And there'd be a man sitting at the back of the of the Christian church that that was uh, facing the alley, <coughs> and he was sitting there. And I noticed that that one day when I was out, and he was expo was exposing himself to the kids. And I went up to him and I said, listen, you better pull those pants up. Or I said, I'm coming out here with a butcher knife and you won't have nothing left to expose. <laughs> he disappeared. I never saw him afterwards. 
but I was worried about the children and no one was paying any attention to the old guy sitting there. So I just took it in hand and got rid of him. At least he left. I probably, if I had called the police, I probably wouldn't have done anything because the police were very, oh, I guess they thought if you lived like this, you enjoyed it or you wouldn't be living like it, like this in, in such a place. Because when, one time when we lived in Woodward Place, the, the a filling station at uh, uh, Michigan and East Drive was robbed. And we didn't know about it, but Jim had a friend that lived on Middle Drive uh, at the at the uh, uh, I forget what they called those houses that faced the alley, and and the only way Jim could get to their house was to walk up the alley, and we lived on one side of the alley and they lived on the other. Well, he'd go up there a lot of evenings and and visit for a while and then come home. And he did that evening. We had no idea the, uh, that the filling station was robbed. And, and pretty soon there were police all over creation. And there was, and Jim was coming home and he he was Jim always walked pretty fast, and he came home, and he knew somebody was trailing him. So when he got to the apartment that lived that was next door, he went in their back door and then came out the front door. And by that time, the policeman had come around the house and was going to catch him at the front door. And he said, you know this guy? I said something to Jim. And I said, yes, it's my son. Well, he said, you better be thankful he didn't run because if he'd run, I'd have shot him. Mm -hmm. And that's how, that's how they were trained to take care of people that didn't, weren't millionaires and living real high on on their list. So I never it never bothered ever to call the police because just couldn't uh, you, you just couldn't expect any help from them. <coughs> And no, uh, we lived there on um, Alabama Street. Well, we were lived on North Street, but we, but we lived across from Mrs. Hendricks. And the thing was that she had girls working for her. And there were police cars there all day long. That was another thing I, th I th often thought of. Uh, the police knew what was going on because they were taking part in. And the thing was that some of the several girls that lived in our block, they worked for her, and when she'd get short of girls. Then she'd go to the door and just call those girls' names, and they'd take off to her house. And, uh, I, 
I know we, we saw some when they performed in town at some uh, singers and musicians saw them at the house and, and they did go in there and I remember one particularly calling out through the window. I guess he got cold feet and straight front, got him out the door and everybody grabbed him. Anyway, he come out the window. I don't know why. But Mrs. Hen Hendricks was a good person uh, to the neighborhood. She'd always have a big pot of stew or some kind of soup or, or something fixed. And she'd always want to share it with everybody. And she, I, I don't see, she knew that I would, I laundered things for people. And I, I did search for one man who was an executive in some business place. And he wanted all his shirts collars and the fronts and the cuffs all cold starched and I did his one time when whoever had been knowing him said uh, something happened they couldn't do it that week so uh, uh, someone brought him to me and, and asked me to do well, well I did him and when he got when he got him back, he said he didn't want anybody else to ever do his uh, shirts anymore. He wanted me to do them, so he paid me pretty good for doing it. But I don't remember what he paid. But anyway, I've I was satisfied that I didn't feel like I'd been taken for a dummy to, to do it. And he did, never wanted anybody else to, to do his, his uh, shirts. So I continued to do them. And then I guess I was pregnant with Sue. And I wor worried about how I was going to manage that because they didn't think I'd be able toward the last of the shirts. But the men died of a heart attack. I think it was a heart attack. I'm just not sure. Just a few weeks before I was ready to tell him I, I wouldn't be able to do them. And that was one worry. I, I worried so about how I would handle that. And I felt, felt bad that it turned out the way it did. But Mrs. Hendrix, she knew I did the laundry like that. So she decided I could do, I should do her curtains all the time. And she paid me good for doing them. And if she found out something that she could pay somebody for doing, she would see to it that, that they would get what she was able to offer. And she was very good at looking at every, looking for everyone. And the people was the earth. Let's see, Dean's had the first house double, and they they had the whole double because they read it quite a bit, and then that was the next double was the one a family had <coughs> that uh, lived next door in half of ours. And then there was an, 
the third one, there, they had the whole house, and Mrs. Williams had the whole, had two houses, and uh, she lived in the one house and rented the other one. And then the people were very friendly all along there. What?